Hey, this is Tyler with Survivorpedia. All right, so there's been a lot of discussion about the ultimate bug out gun, right? So let's talk about what exactly that means. Well, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. The ultimate bug out gun might be this really lightweight, long range capable gun. So if we're going to talk about something like that, we start looking at a 308 that's short, maybe something that can acquire targets with fast, but you're not going to carry as much ammunition. To other people, that might be something like a 1022, right? And a 1022, this gives me the ability to carry a metric ton of ammunition. So for other people, that means that you're going to have something more lightweight with higher amounts of ammunition because the heavier the ammunition or the larger the caliber, the more weight you're going to have for the same volume of ammunition, right? So something might look like this, a backpacker 1022, and I can load three magazines of 10, one magazine in the gun that is not chambered, and throw that in a backpack. And this, with ammunition, is going to be lighter than this guy right here, and I can carry three times the amount of ammunition for about the similar amount of weight. So let's talk just about ammunition for a moment here. So if we're just talking about ammunition and we kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison, if I've got a box of 50 CCI 22, it's only gonna be this big, right? There's 50, there's 100. I can triple this up and I'm still not getting to the, the volume of 50 308, right? So if I compare 50 22 with 60, because they don't come in exact boxes of 223, 60 308, and 50, this is 10 gauge, which I'm using to represent 12 gauge, because that's what I have right now, um, you can kind of immediately see the size disparity. So for this much volume and this much weight, I could potentially do, I'm going to guess, two to 300 rounds of 22. Or, you know, for this much space, I can do one to 200 rounds. For this much space, I can do about 100, 150. So it ultimately depends on what you're looking for, right? So with a 12 gauge, a 10 gauge, or that kind of gun, I can I have a lot of options, right? I can do, I can do slugs, I can do t uh, double out buck, birdshot, but I can't do as many. For the same amount of weight and space, I have less rounds available. This might be something that's excellent for a homestead. This might be something that's excellent for a ranch or a facility where the weight doesn't matter and the volume doesn't matter. And I don't have the range when it comes to something like a 12 gauge. If we move to the 308, which I'm gonna put in the same family, 300 Winchester, 270, 30 out six, those type of rounds, this guy right here is going to be more for deer. It's going to be for moose, elk, larger game, that kind of thing. You're wasting ammunition throwing 308s at uh, small game, um, anything really smaller than a coyote. So there's some pros and some cons there. With this, with the 12 gauge or 10 gauge, you can put birdshot in it and you can take squirrels out of a tree and then throw a slug, slug in it and, and put a moose down. But the ammunition takes up substantially more volume and more weight than any of the others. We move down to 223. You, with proper play, uh, round placement, can kill most anything that you're going to kill. And if you can't, put another round in it or get closer, right? And this is a pretty solid platform. The 5.56223 AR-15, like it works, right? Uh, there's a ton of people that have military training. They're going to use that. I love my AR-15. I have a 10-inch SBR. And it's just a great gun. But even having said that, the majority of sur survival situations don't involve you shooting at other people. Now, I say that with the caveat that if you're in a war zone, clearly that involves you shooting at other people. That's the one thing you need to protect against. And the bigger the gun, better, right? The more ammunition, the more bullet size, the better. However, the majority of survival situations involve you getting food. There is a reason that pilots use guns like this. This gun can break down and all of it goes inside of the stock and then it will float, okay? This is a 22. This is not a 5.56, 223, 308, 30-06, 270, 10 gauge, 12 gauge, whatever. Because this is something that they're gonna use to get some game. Now, this can take people down. 
I don't want to use a 22 if I'm in a self-defense situation. I'm also not gonna stand up and be in the open and fight against someone that's throwing 22 ammunition at me. So I know it still has a measure of effectiveness when it comes to protecting you in a self-defense situation. The takeaway on all of this is you need to decide what's best for you. Do you have a ton of shelf space or are you protecting a facility, a ranch, a home? Do you need the ability to have buckshot for the squirrels and slugs for the moose? Or is that overkill in weight and you want to travel across the land from point A to point B, you need an actual bug out weapon system or a get home weapon system? Stay away from this, right? If it's a perimeter defense system, this is great, right? This is a phenomenal medium to short range weapon system but the weight and the size of the ammunition is horrible. If we start moving down, this is a more long range situation. We can take down large game, take down people if they're trying to hurt us, right? But even here, I don't carry that much ammunition. It gets ridiculously heavy when we're up to 300 plus rounds. 223, 556, 300 rounds is a basic combat load. That's about seven magazines and you can put seven more magazines in a go bag. You got 14 magazines, 600 rounds, you can do a lot there, but that's still less than a 15 minute gunfight, right? So if you really wanna put high volume and low weight, the 222 is gonna come out on top with this in that here's 100 rounds and here's 100 rounds, okay? So that's really something to think about. Lastly, I think you don't need to just choose one. And if you do choose a system, there is some value to being able to use one of the most common rounds across your platform. Here's what I mean by that. I can take a gun like this and put a suppressor on it. The barrel's long enough that I'm gonna have a decent amount of accuracy under, under 25 meters. I'm gonna be able to hit squirrels, I'm gonna be able to hit whatever I need. And I have enough in a semi-automatic capacity that I can put more rounds on whatever it is that I'm trying to stop if I need to. Obviously, I'm not hitting bear with this. I'm not killing anything large but this is going to be something that can feed me every day. If, it, if it's squirrels or grouse, chickens, neighbor's cat, you know, this is a way that I can feed and protect. This can be used in conjunction with something like this. So if I do combine something like this with something like this, and this is the Ruger 1022 takedown in stainless because I like waterproof with the backpacker stock, I would need to change the barrel, but it gives me the ability to go from a 22 pistol. This gives me the ability to take something small game getter, suppress it, make it very quiet and effective, and use a similar suppressor on the same weapon system, right? They're both 22 long rifle. This could take a suppressor. This can take a suppressor. I can put tons of ammunition. This has, I've probably got 1,500 rounds of ammunition in this bag from these little holders to the big 25 round magazines that I've got on the bottom of it. And I just get more bang for my book. I get more ammunition. I get a, a phenomenal game taking system with a backup system. And it doesn't mean that I can't put all of these in one bag and add a 308 for long range or add an AR-15 or add a 12 gauge. So we're gonna jump between a couple of these, 22 and 308. The 22 is one of the most versatile rounds that you can use because it's the quietest when suppressed. You can put it in pistols, you can put it in long rifles, you can use it on small game, large game. Um, you can carry it in huge volumes. Yes, there's less thumping powder, power, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a 10-22 rifle and a Glock or maybe 44 or Thompson contender type pistol or maybe a 22 pistol with a 308 for heavy hitter or a 22 pistol with an AR-15. The point is the 22 I really genuinely believe should be the basic foundation for a bug out gun or a get home gun or a survivor related gun because of the quiet, the volume of ammunition that you can use and the versatility that it, that it offers you. So I'm gonna shoot this real quick now this has a silencer co-suppressor on it. It's a Sparrow. It is ridiculously noisy in here and super echoey because of all the metal. It, we're basically standing in an echo chamber. It's not going to quite accurately represent the sound, 
But, and, and the sound's coming off of my lav mic, so it's right up here nice and close. I do want to show you, however, how quiet this is. And you can kind of imagine what the benefits of that are, right? If I'm hunting small game birds or something, I might get two of them instead of one. If I'm hunting in a place that I don't want to get caught because it's a grid down situation, not an illegal situation, um, this gives me again the ability to get that first shot off undetected, maybe even a second or third shot off. Now, they call them silencers. They don't silence anything. They suppress. Uh, you're still going to be able to hear this. So anyway, without talking too much more, let's see where it shoots at. I have, I have never run this suppressor on this gun system yet, and this is a brand new Mark IV 22 pistol for me. So we'll get this up here. Take the safety off. Fairly accurate when I'm not jerking the trigger. Let's add a little bit of distance to it. The suppressor is super quiet. That echo is insane. I can hear it go, and then I can hear the sound go all the way to the end and come back. And that sound we're hearing is the bullet jinking through the trap. So. The suppressor, the suppressor is like a and then that loud noise you're hearing right afterward is that, that round bouncing up and down the trap in the back. So we're going to have to do some outside uh, reviews of the suppressor in the future. Also, I'm shooting 22 stingers, so these are some of the fastest 22 bullets I could find. I know they don't go ultrasonic out of the barrel because there's not enough barrel length to get up to that level of speed. Now, if this was a rifle barrel, you would hear the ultrasonic snap because it's a pistol barrel. The noise you're hearing is the round hitting the trap. Now, if I was in a rifle, shooting with a rifle and a suppressor, I would use subsonic ammunition so that the rifle never gets above the speed required to break the sound barrier. This is not breaking the sound barrier because it's a pistol. So basically what I'm saying is you don't need to use subsonic am ammunition in a pistol because there's not enough barrel length to get up to speed. You do need to use it in a rifle because there is enough barrel length to get up to speed. So if you've got subsonic ammunition, just use them in a rifle, but don't use them in a pistol. This is my close group, my medium group. Right here is my far group. Kind of ugly, but still gets the job done, right? I could have spread that much more and still did what I need to do at 25 or less meters. So let's do a little bit of 308 standing. We've run the suppressor, played with that a little bit. I want to, just want to shoot my 308 a little bit while we're here. It needs to be zeroed again, which is something you need to do on a regular basis. A lot of people will buy the equipment and then they'll never use it zeroed again, so I'm not sure where it's gonna shoot. But I guess we're gonna find out, right? So, I've got the bipod, but a rifle like this, the value is its ability to come up, get your sight picture, and take your round, right? Um, that's kinda, kinda the design characteristic behind a rifle like this. Another thing you can do is just wrap your arm from, put it in the center, wrap it around the front, put it up in the stock, and then just rest your arm down here and it, and it kind of holds itself. The goal of you as a shooter is to be a stable platform for the rifle, right? If I'm holding this and my muscles start shaking, that defeats the purpose of being a stable platform. But if I can just rest like this, and I can stand here all day, this is fairly comfortable. The string or the uh, sling, is taking the majority of the weight holding for me. So let's see where this round is hitting. Yeah, it's about where I was aiming for. It's a little low of center. That's not super stable at all. Let's see where she's hitting.
Okay, I just kind of quick hip shot, put around here, around here, around here, around here, and around here. Um, my crossers were shaking in this much area. It's within a wobble area. That's not amazing shooting. That's just like quick look at it and hit it. Um, but the reason that I'm doing that is just to illustrate a point. If you're using it as a patrol rifle, you come up on a deer, hit right it needs to be able to be thrown quickly you're I don't know doing a primitive defense you want some quick reactionary time now if you do want to shoot something a bit longer distance drop it on a backpack frame drop it on the ground hold it get your breath control trigger squeeze 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 you can be substantially more accurate by taking just like a half second longer right I think the big thing that people fail on is they always ask what is the one best bug out gun or the one best backpack or the one best knife find something that works for you and get that and then get something else later it's like shoes the one best pair of shoes for basketball is not the one best pair of shoes for hiking which is not the one best pair of shoes for rock climbing they're all purpose-built but if you're gonna start somewhere I think you should start with the 1022 takedown or something like a Mark IV Ruger, or a Scout, or an AR-15, and then add to that, all right? Hopefully this is valuable to you, and thanks for watching.